Okay, so I'm going to be finishing up my line art now and then coloring behind it. And we're going to go over some of the different approaches to coloring. So as you're finishing up your line art, make sure you kind of squint at it. I'm going to turn off the uh, sketch behind it, right? So it's just perfectly clean. And then see if it needs anything. And I think I'm going to add some stuff with my blob brush. Just little touches here and there. Be an extra feather. And then let's see, there's something else I saw. Yeah, so just little things. You can quickly clean up if you see them. Great. Because it, to, the ideal way to do this is to always keep your line art as a vector but it means you can't ha make any changes to it later. Just like your black and white logo, you can change the color of it, but you can't change the actual structure of it. Oops. Okay. But good enough. We've got our shadow underneath. We've got our blood. It's all going to make sense. Okay, so now that I have my finished line art, I can turn off. I don't need to delete it. I can turn off the sketch layer. And now I need to save it as a new file format. And this is uh, so that I can move the vector between Photoshop and Illustrator easily. And this is called an EPS format. So for those of you doing your line art in a, in a raster program, don't worry about this. But if you're doing it as a vector, this is pretty important. Yeah, I think I got everything on. Okay, so we're going to say file save first as our AI. So Carl assignment seven line art AI. Then we're going to say save as and instead of it being an Adobe Illustrator file, an AI file, we're going to make it an EPS file. Now that EPS file is now saved on my desktop. I can close Illustrator. Remember, this was the one I did through live tracing. And you know what, I'll save this as an EPS too, just so you can see the difference over my coloring. And now we have to think about how I'm gonna color this. And I'm saving all those EPSs to the desktop. So underneath the assignment sheet, In Canvas, you'll see a link to these slides. So if you go to those slides, this is what we're going to talk through. Digital coloring is whenever you have an outline, and we now have an outline, and we want to add color behind it. So color comes in basically three main types, right? It comes in flat color, duotone color, and full spectrum color. So we're going to go through those. When digital coloring started in um, mass production, early 20th century, 
they were limited to basically these colors that were the, the easy formulations of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black inks. So you can have black outline, and then you could have these colors filling in behind the black outline. And that's what old comic books looked like up until really about the 1930s. So the most basic type of color is called flat color. And that is you take your, your outline and you just put one solid color behind it. And so those colors are matching what's called the local color. So if the thing that you're coloring is the skin, you just pick, pick one flat color for the skin and you fill it in everywhere you see skin. If the one flat color for the hair is orange, you fill it all in orange. For the, the gloves is blue, you fill it all in blue. So local color means the color the thing is, no matter the lighting. Right? And that's how like old Sunday comics were done, like uh, Peanuts. Charlie Brown's shirt was always yellow. It was one local color of yellow. It didn't matter if it was night or day. It was just always one flat yellow. So this is always the first step for any kind of digital coloring. No matter how advanced you're going to get, you have to first put in one flat color for your major, you know, your major areas. And we call this step flatting. And I have a link here to a site that collects flatting examples. And so this is one such flatting example. And very often, flatting artists, which is a good entry-level digital art job, they will pick pretty wild colors because the whole point is that they're easy to select next to each other. So if we look at this website, you'll see kind of the variety of it. And it's how digital colors are done. So this is the flatting for this Sandman comic. And then it eventually becomes more specialized, like this, with tones in between. But it all starts with just flat tones, first and foremost, to go underneath the line art. This is one of my favorite artists and favorite colorists working together. So Jeff Darrow is the artist, really, really fine detailed line art. But then Dave Stewart is the colorist, and he starts by flatting underneath. And then they start to get separated out and toned differently to become a lot more interesting. This is simpler line art, simple flats. Then you see all the tones added to the flats. So flatting is that in between step, very often, of just bold strong color <laughs> okay so back to these so once we have our lines then we can do um, flats within but your line art might already have solid areas of black and these are called full bleed areas. So sometimes flat color can look very finished. So all of these are just examples of flat color. The flat color of the blue of the hair, right? Because the black is not a color. Black is the full bleed. And the yellow of the gold and the red. You know, and that same flat color works for all of these. On your final exam, I'll ask you to identify what digital coloring approaches use. So for all of these, even though they look stylistically pretty different, flat color is the approach. Because for anything that's colored in, it's just one average tone, right? Even when it has a lot of black shadows like this, it's still just flat color. There's only one tone of skin being used. In animation, flat coloring is the way it was for a long time because it's a whole lot easier to produce quickly. And sometimes, as long as you're picking the right colors, it can be really, really 
satisfying. So this is what flatting looks like using really kind of strong, crazy colors so that they're easy to change later. But this is what kind of finished flat color might look like. And this is what's called local color, right? Where you're trying to match the color the thing actually is. Whereas flatting is just making each thing easy to select. Here we have Dave Stewart. You see his flats. And then you see the final. Okay, so the next step, if you want to go beyond just flat color, you do what's called duotone. You take that one color of skin, and then you separate it into two tones, uh, a light and a dark, and sometimes many tones in between. But as long as they're just variations on the, on the local color, then it is duotone. So instead of one orange for the hair, we have all these different oranges. Instead of one tone for the skin, we have all these different tones. Instead of one blue for the gloves, we have all these different blues. Now the difference in duotone is you can do it with a hard, sharp, clean edge, like you see here. Or you can do it with a soft and transitional, gradual edge or gradient, like you see here. So I call this soft edge duotone. And I call this hard edge duotone. So let's look at hard edge duotone, which is very common in animation. You see the, the local color is split into two tones, a light and a dark. And then the, the variation between them is really cleanly cut out. So that the edge is hard. Light and dark. Light and dark. Light and dark. Light and dark. Everywhere. And it adds a nice dimensionality to the, the local flat color. So soft edge duotone can give you a lot more modeling. It can give you kind of rounded roundedness, right? It's like using dodge and burn on this one tone in order to get all of these different tones. Here is a cut edge duotone, right, in animation. Here's a cut edge duotone. You see how the hair is now two different blues. The skin is now two different skin tones. The red is now two different reds. The yellow is now two different yellows, right? Um, but they actually removed the outline and it still holds up really cleanly because it's all cut edge, and hard edged. And so this is what you most commonly see in animation. This is, you see, the old way of doing duotone before computers. You had to match up the shadow color with the, uh, the printing color for the light version, and they would be mocked up with markers or watercolors and then synced up to the printing, the printing uh, codes and all written in. It was very labor-intensive. And then it also really matters the kind of paper that you print on, right? So as we were printing on better paper, we were able to get more and more tones of duotone. Then the last type is called full spectrum. Full spectrum means that you can do anything you want color-wise. So now the, the orange also has reds in it, also has browns in it, also has purples in it, the orange of the hair and the leotard. The skin also has purple in it, also has pink in it. Uh, the, the blues also have orange in them, also have green in them, also have purple in them. It's kind of a more fully painterly way of doing it, but you'll notice it usually works against the line art. But it can be used pretty effectively little full spectrum touches. So notice in Wonder Woman's hair here, it's not just two different tones of brown or blue. You have purples, you have blues, you have browns, you know, all used. In the reflections, you have pinks and blues and purples. In her skin, you have things that look like blue and green, as well as orange and yellow. You know, so that's full spectrum. Soft edged or hard edged full spectrum. Here you see this background um, 
Hydra.